If anybody's gonna kill my creation, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> As of 2022, wasn't out of pocket enough. The ghost of sports entertainment past has come back to reclaim his goddamn company. All time high talent morale, consistent creative, exciting returns and signings. No, 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 no. Better luck next time, pal that's what you get for wanting nice things. If only Vince would have put this much thought into the weekly television shows that he's doing with this new season of Succession, we wouldn't all be in community mourning right now. In the back of my mind, I knew Vince wasn't gonna be able to play Susie Homemaker for too long. He can't help himself. But was I foolish enough to believe that he wouldn't be back in less than six months? And it all happened on January 6th? My friends, I tell you, that cannot be a coincidence. As you can hear the chants from the, the crowd. Let's go, Brandon. Nine times out of 10, if you're watching this, you've already seen Uncle Dave, Corny, WrestleTalk, Cultaholic, or any of the other great wrestling content creators cover this at length. But just in case you need a quick overview of the facts. Vince McMahon billionaire, evil mastermind, and genetic jackhammer fell to his own indiscretion, infidelity, and lack of intelligence when he had to retire from the WWE last summer. The man who beat the US government, obliterated the territories, crushed his competition, and bought it for a bargain, wasn't able to withstand the wrath of a sexual misconduct investigation up to 12 million, or reading now, up to 19.6 million dollars worth of hush money payment settlements to women over the course of two decades put a black eye over the family-friendly enterprise. And so, it was decided that it was best for him to step away. The Wall Street Journal reported back in December that Vince had attempted a return back to the WWE stating that he had been given bad advice by the people closest to him. However, the board unanimously voted against him coming back, citing that it would not be in the best interest of the company for his return at all. But in true Vincent Kennedy McMahon fashion, he wasn't gonna take no for an answer. Brandon is not a financial expert or well-versed in the stock market by any means, but I do understand this. Vince always maintained his shares of the company, and with those shares and stocks, he also maintained his majority voting power. Vince gave the board an ultimatum. Either you bring me back so that I can oversee the media rights and sell negotiations, or I'm gonna cop block it from ever happening. So, it seems like his master plan worked. This isn't the first time we've heard talks or, you know, discussions or rumors speculation about the company being sold i remember you know the we're always open for business or whatever they used to say um but this is probably the first time they've been so upfront about it and to think that it would be used as a leveraging tool to hold the company hostage is wild if you will allow me in his announcement Vince McMahon asked to be reinstated as the executive chairman of the board of the publicly traded company, along with chair seats for former WWE co-presidents Michelle Wilson and George Barrios. He added, my return will allow the WWE, as well as any transaction counterparties, to engage in these processes, knowing they will have the support of the controlling shareholder. Vince himself also said this, um, WWE has an exceptional management team in place, um, and I do not intend for my return to have any impact on their roles, duties, or responsibilities. Wow. WWE said in a news release Friday that Mr. McMahon had removed Joe Ellen, Lyons Dillon, Jeffrey Speed, and Alan Wexler from the board. In addition, Ignis LaHoud and Manji Singh um, I have resigned from the board effective Friday. We're fans. We don't really, I don't really care who these people are. The, the, the important part is 
He replaced three and two stepped down. Vince essentially spun the block, wiped out all of his ops, and one big power play, and it is insane. Call me naive, call me whatever you want. I trust the powers that be to make WWE be more and more profitable. All of that good stuff. It's, that's not even the biggest fear. For me as a fan, it comes down to the talent and the creative. WWE's creative has been the best it has been in years. I don't want to go back to the 50-50 booking, the torn up scripts hours before the show, and all the backstage turmoil and walking on eggshells of the past. Other than like the 50 people out of their rabid ass mind online cheering on Vince in spite of all of the allegations that have come out to them, blaming the women and not seeing the problem of what's going on, actually want to see this. Like who actually in their right mind wants to see this? If we can take the old man at his word that he released in the press statement, about none of the day-to-day -day operations changing, none of the roles and the responsibilities changing. If all of that stays the same, then we don't have anything to worry about. But for someone who would go through all of those links and put out a threat of, if I can't have the WWE, no one will, to come back to the board, who's to say that he won't be back running creative? Another thing, does the potential PR nightmare about whatever else may come out about Vince not alarm any potential buyers? Does, does that not scare anyone else at all? But I can't really blame Triple H, Stephanie, or Nick Khan for this. I mean, they tried to prevent him from coming back. Their hands were tied in the situation. I just hope that all of the goodwill and investment and all the people who came back to the WWE hoping that things have changed and things will be better. And all of the excitement from the fans, I just hope that doesn't all go in vain. But, I mean, there's nothing we can do to change it. He's back, so as long as he helps WWE secure that bag, keep making that money, get those negotiations right for the television deals and for streaming, and all those things are quality, and if a sale does indeed happen within the next few years, let's just hope it's to someone like Comcast slash NBC Universal, or just really any corporate entity that at least has an appreciation and an understanding of professional wrestling slash sports entertainment that will still allow the current infrastructure to run things mostly. Um, you know, we know as fans of pop culture, media, and professional wrestling, of course, what corporate mergers can do to uh, beloved uh, companies, franchises, forms of entertainment, namely the AOL Time Warner merger for WCW and then we've just seen how the acts of Zazlav with uh, the Warner Bros. Discovery merger has cut a lot of things so uh, WWE makes money our fan base is still growing strong so I'm not 100% worried but it does make me kind of nervous to think about as ironic as ironic as this sounds someone other than McMahon's owning the WWE that's not already in the business themselves. Vince has shown that he's willing to go full scorched earth to take back his company despite everyone's wishes. So, and at the end of the day, I do get it. He is his, so I would get why he would want to be a part of the biggest deal transaction in the history of the business, not just the WWE, but help WWE succeed and move forward to the future get the money for what you have earned and then take your ass back home to retirement please please i know some of y'all are just like calm and everything is just right as rain but just entertain this thought for one moment is it so hard to believe that we're scared by this the mr mcmahon character would definitely kill his own creation and in fact he attempted to by injecting a lethal dose of poison into the company just because someone else took control. He subjected his daughter to abduction and crucifixion just to get one over his arch nemesis. He had an on-screen affair and made his wife watch and made that same sneaky link bark like a dog on national television. And who could forget 
the Kiss My Ass Club. Ah, I know what you're gonna say. I know if you haven't already disliked or clicked off the video by now because of what I just said. It, you call me a mark or anything like that. It was a work, clearly, bro. I know, I know. But, but just hear me out. Haven't the past few years shown us that the man isn't far removed from the character himself? Rita Chatterton. The alleged involvement slash bribery with the Nancy Argentino investigation. The entire steroid trial. Threatening to block the company from securing any new media rights or sell negotiations if he wasn't reinstated. Kicking his son and daughter out of the company last year only to let reports leak about their incompetence the entire hush money saga and literally surrounding himself with yes men at every turn who will answer to his beck and call you know the saying art imitates life let's just hope that this storyline doesn't end with the decline of the product that we love and cherish so much thank you so much for watching i appreciate you for tuning in to this we'll keep things going trying to give you all the good news bits and opinions and we have some really exciting things for you here on the channel in 2023 we appreciate you for tuning into ek wrestling my name is brandon and until next time i love you and goodbye